Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch a Movie. I am Mike, and this is a movie review for The Loved Ones. We're going to start out non-spoiler, and I'll give you plenty of warning before we get into the actual spoilers, because this is one of those movies some of you guys may not have seen, and if you haven't, I totally think you should watch. Now, I saw this ages ago on like Redbox, and it's the chick just holding the drill to someone, so I was like, that looks cool. I've almost seen it like five or six times, just never got around to it, and then I saw it on someone's, I was looking for the next Just Like Scream video to do, saw it in somebody's list, and I was like, Oh, weird. Okay. Watched it. It's not a Just Like Scream movie in my opinion, but it checks out as Father's Day horror, and Father's Day th is this week. So get your dad something nice. And by dad, I mean me. And all I actually want you to do is just click the subscribe button, click the like button, maybe maybe check out the Patreon if I've been a good father to you over the years. Pleasure to your mother in all the right ways. It'd be nice if you could check out the Patreon. Just click around, turn off your, close your eyes, and feel around. See what happens. This is directed by Sean Byron. Sean Byron fucking he directed the devil's candy which was a badass kick-ass underrated metal horror movie that came out a couple years ago if you've had it seen it you should definitely check it out as well but he's two for two on these are his only two directed full feature movies and I went to look him up and I was like he's got to be doing something right I was thinking he should be definitely signed on to one of these deals the barbarian director God or Jordan Peele or, or Robert Eggers one of those kind of original horror deals because these are two original movies and they're both kick-ass and he wrote them uh, but no he's not even got an anything listed as upcoming on his IMDb. There's no news stories about him possibly directing something. And that just blows my mind. I hope he's working on something behind the scenes because someone like fucking where's Waldo that dude? Tell, tell us what's going on. So the movie follows Brent, played by Xavier Samuel, who's just lost his dad in a car wreck. And he's got some really messed up emotional issues over it, obviously. He's even got some suicidal behavior going on. And he's at, they're all talking about the school dance when he closes his locker and this super strange girl creeps up behind him like one of those direct TV salesmen at Walmart or one of the cats in like one of those TikTok videos that just keeps getting closer or just like your general anxiety just creeps up behind him and is like will you go to the dance with me? sorry I'm done with Holly and you can tell from the jump it's like you're not completely all right are you like he's nice about it he's like no you know uh, he's like i can't he's like i'm going with my girlfriend uh, i'm sorry so then a few scenes later he's having sex with his girlfriend in the car and she's just standing outside the car watching them have sex you know what all of us do when we finish our arby's and we've still got 20 minutes of our lunch break left just watch someone fucking a car from like a foot away just standing outside the window like this but yeah, he politely says, I'm sorry, I can't take you to the dance, walks away, and that's all it fucking took, Gene. That's all it took. So later in the day, he's doing his best Ethan Hunt impression for Mission Impossible 2, dangling off the side of rocks, just being, you know, an angsty teenager who may or may not be about to fall to their own death. And the scene's actually sort of funny because there's sort of a struggle and it reminds me of that scene in Ace Ventura when he's trying to look at that guy's Miami Dolphins ring and he can't catch up to him. So eventually he just chloroforms him. He wakes up at a dinner table surrounded by Princess and her dad who's so fucking creepy he's only listed as daddy in the credits which is even fucking creepier and they're both sitting there staring at him and they're eating chick chicken like loudly with all the slurping chicken sounds you can imagine chicken being eaten with chicken and her invalid mother who has a strange wound in the middle of her head and is completely just like immobile, doesn't speak anything. I already said invalid. I don't know why I have to explain it. And they're going to force prom on him with her and they have a whole night planned of dinner, of dancing, looking at picture albums, torture, butt stuff, if they gotten around to it, I bet. And you know, our typical Friday night, but he's just a high school kid. The movie is overall a lot like The Devil's Candy. It's fucked up, it's dark, it's depraved, but it also has a lot of heart and a lot of metal. There's this subplot between his friend and this goth metal chick that he's trying to date where they're going to the dance while all this stuff's going on. And like the movie just keeps panning back to them in their car, like chugging vodka, smoking weed and headbanging. And you're like, I don't know what the point of this is, but I'm enjoying it for whatever reason. I actually like those characters a lot even if they were sort of peripheral. But the mood is the same. The overall move and the vibe and the cinematography is the same as it was for The Devil's Candy here. And even in that, there is moments where you feel sympathetic for the for the villains. <laughs> moments. <laughs> moments. And mainly just the her villain, not the dad. He's a fucking creepy weirdo, creepy fucking weirdo. But Princess and Daddy, don't make me say that, are both really good vill villains. I mean, well-crafted, just fucked up villains but her villain needle drop is really good once you start to piece together what's going on and you're like oh shit i know what's happening here and it's sort of like 
fucking Tom Cruise noticed you in a dark alleyway and started chasing you, but to a Britney Spears song. I mean, the set, the lighting, the cinematography is all really great throughout the movie, and it zooms into this, like, 1999 Roses Department Store CD boombox that's, like, rusty and dirty, and it's playing this, like, it sounds like an old-school Avril Lavigne or Britney Spears song, but it's just got that perfect edge of just clinger creepiness to it. And the song is Not Pretty Enough by Casey Chambers, and, I mean, you just have to hear it. Am I not pretty enough? Is my heart too broken? So then her dad brings her the dress that he gets her for the dance, and you're like, oh my gosh, this is this is pretty weird. But then she's like, I let, let me change into it and show it to you real quick. And you're like, oh, that's a little weirder. But then the dad starts to see her get half naked and watch her, and you can see that he's getting all hot and bothered by it. And then you're just like, oh, holy Texas two-step and fuck. We are in for a dark night. This movie's going places I did not prepare to go. That's your daughter, man. That's your sister, bro. You made out with your own sister. And you just know at that moment, you just know. You're like, oh, fuck. We're going to Rob Zombie Town. And he wakes up at the table and they start doing fucked up, weird, semi-sexual stuff to him, like trying to force that nasty chicken into his mouth. I may never eat fried chicken again or baked chicken again. I just want to let you know that. PSA. But she starts making him licking the seasoning off his fingers and is like, is it finger looking good? Is it finger looking fucking good? And you're like, stop. Also, that's trademarked. How do you get away with that? The Colonel would never. But once the initial shock of all that sets in, you start to wonder to yourself, okay, is this all there is, though? Like, because at first it's wild. And you're like, holy shit. But then they, they keep on messing with him and they keep doing messed up things to him. And you start to wonder, is, that, is this all there is? Are we just going to be a torture porn horror movie from, from here on out? And I'm happy to report that there are more surprises in store that does take several twists and turns. And it becomes a lot more dynamic again right as the torture porn stuff starts to wear out its welcome. And the movie, again, uses its peripheral characters to piece together a story around it that connects. And then the only problem I really had with it, there was one particular character who I, character who I felt really bad for that I, did, I felt did not get an art completion. Uh, but who knows, maybe that character pops up in one of his films later down the road. He has the work of someone who films like he could be doing things that are interconnected. And the horror shit is there, though. I, I mean, it whether it's emotional trauma, like watching the daddy and daughter shit that just makes you want to set yourself on fire and jump out of a five-story window into a pit of glass and rub your dick in it just to get away from the awfulness that is what's happening on screen that's there or just some really inventive torture horror that you haven't seen before and again some good storytelling involved this is a good horror movie that's topped with an amazing psycho nutbag psycho weirdo performance from robin mclevy that is up there with some of the great ones you both want to punch her in the head and at other times feel sorry for her i think it's fair to say that the loved ones is almost must watch horror for anybody who hasn't seen it yet so if you haven't seen it yet let me stop you there i give the movie an eight out of ten i would click off and enjoy the spoilers for yourself on the screen because now we're getting into the actual spoilers if, if i by the way, if I appear I'm getting sweaty to you, uh, don't be awkwarded out by it, uh, and you're welcome. I hear I look better wet. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I, our air conditioning's out, so they're supposed to come try to fix it today. Fingers crossed, dicks tucked back that I, I, I don't end up having to buy a new fucking HVAC, because that would be scarier than this movie. Those things are expensive. Spoiler time! My favorite surprise of this entire movie was when it turned was the the Wes Craven's People Under the Stairs twist that happens uh, almost towards the end of the movie when they open up the floorboard and there's all those people down there and it was beautiful. I love the throwback to one of my favorite horror movies of all time and second off i like how much meaner they did it like these weren't nice people like these were people who had been fucked up and thrown down there but they're ready to eat people and they're not playing around like he has to fight them off it was very much reminded me i know this movie came way later but barbarian and like the the levels to that there was the movie needed it, it came at a time when the movie kind of again it was getting kind of like the torture porn thing was like all right we've done this what's next javier and then that's what was next and it was perfect i love that touch to it but the torture porn scenes were gnarly as hell too weren't they i mean the whole idea of them putting the drill so far until it breaks the skull and then pouring scalding hot water into the hole and boiling their brains how fucked up was that i love that idea they did a really good job of the way they worked the camera during that scene where they're drilling his head where you're thinking oh my god he's actually going to die i really thought he we were gonna lose that kid for a second and another ingenious thing that that 
Sean Byron did here is that they gave him the shot that I'm guessing rendered his vocal cords useless so that he couldn't scream. I'm assuming that's what happened. Maybe I missed something, but that's the way I took it. But how ingenious is that? Because you got a movie that's about torture and about this kid and like, one annoying part of these kind of films is when you have to like to make it realistic, you know, that you have to sit and watch this person scream and scream and beg and scream. And they just cut that out. They took it right out because they have this this scary like horse scream that comes out when they're in deep pain. But one of the a lot of the elements of this remind me of Texas Chainsaw Massacre for sure and the depravity of it and all that. But that movie sometimes is really annoying to watch too because of all the screaming and the nonsense and like the shit, like it's part of the reason why it's scary. Don't get me wrong, but also it can get really grating on your nerves. I love that, that they decided to circumvent that this way with this. That was really cool. And I feel like this dude knows what he's doing. Cause there's several points where a typical horror film would zig and this movie zags and, and it's all for the enjoyment of the viewer, which I really dug. Uh, another way that he does that in this movie is I actually thought originally I was like, well, the movie was much better to me when this was her first time. When we find out as it goes on that they have a whole scrapbook and there's a bunch of people in the basement and she's been doing this to people forever. And of course, the twist that one of their victims that they had lobotomized basically was the reason that his dad, he wrecked the car and his dad died, which ties it all together. But. I actually decided in the end that I'm glad that this wasn't her first time because eventually I kind of you felt sort of bad for it for her. like man like he's doing all this and she's so fucked up in the head but when you find out that this has been a, a, a th game that they've been running for a while then you go oh okay well it it takes you out of the viewer out of the awkwardness of having to watch them do this for the first time they're seasoned they're pros at it there's no hesitation they are full force and they've got the tools baby look up baby we got the tools they they're ready to go so that just takes out that story element that we had to go through as well. Another way here that I feel like the director circumvented expectations in a neat way. And top level emotional, like gross out horror too, like the daddy daughter stuff when they're dancing and she's like, it's always been you. And they start like, <gasps> I was like, no, fucking stop it. That was, I was squirming all over my couch, which is what good horror does to you. You know what I mean? And they didn't go too fucking far with it. You know, it wasn't like X where they put the camera next to the bed and we had to like literally be fucked by the old people, which that was a great horror scene too. But there was the dick in the milk glass when she pulls his dick out and makes him pee. It reminded me of the scene from Swordfish if it were 10 times fucking worse for the person in the scene. Like she puts this dick in like a used milk glass. And by the way, the way it came off her lips, I was like, ah, I was like, oh. God, Jim. And then she puts his dick in a milk glass, which is gross by itself. But then the guy's like going to nail his dick to the, to the chair. If he can't pee. What? I mean, I, God damn, I'm glad he peed. That's all I can say. Now back to the way the story ties in and the twists and all that stuff like that. I was actually really bummed out for the goth metal chick. Like I liked her character or whatever. I liked that, that whole thing. And I knew it had to go somewhere eventually. Cause it would have been kind of dumb if it didn't. <coughs> But when we find out that her dad is the policeman and that her brother was the dude that caused the wreck and she's home and she's crying and you hear her say, you know, uh, she kind of has a Jennifer Lawrence in Silver Linings Playbook storyline going on there. But when you hear her say, why can't you find him? And she's crying. I felt so broken hearted for her and her family. So when he gets thrown in the pit and the dad comes over, the policeman finds out that they're there and just gets just turns around and just gets hacked saw jim duggan in the face and he's dead i was like what the fuck man that sucked like i hated that point that's one thing i hated about the movie i felt so bad for that family and you showed us all the anguish they were in just to take her dad and us lose him too i was like fuck i would have much rather that dude survived and like gotten out of this and then they would at least gotten some closure i mean i know it's a horror movie and like not everything can work out happy but fuck me running man shit all i can think about now is that girl and she's the one i was talking about could maybe appear in another one of his movies down the line maybe as the killer or something because now she's definitely fuckaroo fuck a riot but I will say that when the dad gets it in the end of the movie, I was fucking cheering. And it was that razor blade, too. The way it just slid, slides across his face and just opens his shit up. I was like, hell yeah, Jim. Crab cakes and football. That's what Marilyn does. Because that guy was just a fucking creepy, wackadoo weirdo who's fucking his own kid. And that's disgusting. And also, he had just a psycho face. What a good actor, by the way. What a good actor. That guy crushed that role. Every time he would just be sitting there like, oh... Oh, <laughs> God damn it. Stop it, dude. You're creeping me out. But then after he's taken out and stabbed to death and thrown in the pit of, of, of misery, 
then she comes out and she's like, okay, now I'm going to go to your house. <laughs> and here's what's going to happen. We will have sex in your car again. It will happen. Dirty Mike and the boys. Uh, she's, she grabs that. She's like, I'm going to go to your house. I'm going to kill your girlfriend and I'm going to kill your mom. And then that scene where they meet in the roadway, the fist fight between them kind of reminded me of the end of Friday the 13th, you know, uh, with Pamela Voorhees or whatever, but a great scene with like the screaming and whatever intense as fuck. And then when he pulls up behind, hits her with the car and she is like, the T-1000 version of the stage five clinger from Wedding Crashers, just crawling in the road with her broken hands and shit, still like not giving up. That was an amazing scene. And the way the way they shot the car backing into her and r running her over, great scene. And, and, and of course, there's the character arc for him of like, he learned his, that he had a will to live and survive all that stuff. So I love that uh, loose end here or there. But yeah, I thought it was a great movie, man. I think it's absolutely, absolutely Sean Connery's birthday. Uh, absolutely must watch material for, for fans of horror. Um, what, a, what a cool movie. Cool story. Original. Again, this guy should be getting... Like just like the Smile director and Robert Eggers and these guys who are being lauded for bringing us and rightfully so, uh, and Jordan Peele for bringing us original horror content and they're signing these deals. What's going on with this dude? What's going on? Where, where's where's the third movie? Why where's the where's the back for this dude? Um, yeah, thank you guys for watching this. I know this was kind of a longer one, but it, what a, what a crazy movie! Definitely recommend it. Let me know what you guys thought about it. Let me know what you guys think about it. What's a movie that uh, that you feel like not a lot of people have watched that that you can recommend? Recommend it down below. And uh, I love your all's fucking faces. I hope you guys have an amazing day. Halloween never ends. Suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS. Cause Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, Halloween never ends, yeah.